So we've looked at finding lots of probabilities, and I want to give one tip specifically for finding them, and that is to make sure you're careful when you read a problem to, to think about whether you are finding the probability of a single event or multiple events. Because if it's a single event, you're going to be using a single fraction um, using the original definition for finding the theoretical probability. The idea that you look at how many options there are for that event to occur divided by the total. So a single fraction if you're dealing with, with one event. If you have two or more events, we use the multiplication rule. And there you'll be multiplying a probability for each of the events that are happening, however many events you have. Let's look at a couple of examples to just kind of clarify that. First example, say you have a box of screws that contains six flathead screws and eight Phillips head screws all mixed together. You reach into the box without looking. What is the probability you pull out a flathead screw versus what is the probability you pull out two flathead screws? Now, very similar questions, but it's important to recognize that in the first one, you're looking at the probability of a single event one event. So you would have a single fraction that you would start with to calculate this. A single fraction. Whereas when you have two events, picking out two flathead screws, you are talking about two probabilities that get multiplied together. So that's important to recognize how many things are happening that you're trying to find the probability of. So in this first situation, the probability you pull out a flathead screw, there are six flathead screws out of a total of 14. We just simply calculate six divided by 14 is approximately 42.9%. The probability you pull out two flathead screws, uh, the first chance of pulling one out would be six out of 14 like we had above. And then if we don't replace that first one, which it doesn't say we do, that means there's only five flathead screws out of 13, five out of 13, and that would be approximately 16.5%. So the difference between one and two things. Now, I want you to be careful not to mistake uh, two for being two options. So um, you could, in another scenario when there were three things, um, maybe have somebody say, what's the probability you pull out a red marble or a blue marble? Notice you're still pulling out one marble in that situation, but you're, uh, you're allowing for it to be red or to be blue. That is still a single event. Um, when you need to use the multiplication rule is when you pull out two marbles or three marbles. Uh, and so it's, it's important to distinguish how many things are you pulling out? How many events do you have? Um, the other thing, second example here, my weather app says that there is a 25% chance of rain for each day this week. What is the probability it will rain the next four days in a row? Here we have a thing, something happening four days in a row. So we're talking about multiple events, four events happening. And we're going to multiply the probability of each. Now, when the, the other thing I wanted to really hit home here in these tips is that if you are not given the data from which the probability comes from, in this case, we know that it's a 25% chance of rain for each day of the week. That means we must use the 25% directly. We do not alter it for each time. So we would use 0.25 as a decimal times 0.25 as a decimal times 0.25. We don't adjust the probability here because we don't know what the, where the data came from. We use the, the percentage directly. Usually the other reason to use the percentage directly is that for this, this percentage is probably based on thousands of calculations and therefore there would be really little difference between uh, a single change in, in, in one of those thousands. So that's why it's, it's certainly fine to continue to use 25% for each of these events without changing it. Again, if you have multiple things 
sorry, the same thing that you're uh, uh, multiplying multiple times, you could use an exponent. This would be 0.25 to the fourth power if you want. And when we calculate this, we get, when we round to the first decimal point, 0.4%. And again, I did round. Sometimes people get a little confused when these numbers get really small, so I'll write out. I actually, in my calculator, got something like 0.0039, etc. And so when I move the decimal point two places, it becomes 0.39, which then rounds to 0.4%.